Hi guys, this is Shannon just doing a quick review of the camera app. Now, um, this may seem underwhelming because I'm sure a lot of you feel like you know how to use a camera on a smartphone or a tablet, um, but with the iPad, there is one new feature that makes it really handy. Uh, there is a, a markup feature in it now that hasn't been available before that I wanted to make sure that you were aware of. To access the camera app, if you have recently used it, now on iPads, if you've updated to the most current iOS, now on iPads, not only do we have our bottom tray, but they also pull up the most recent apps that you've used. So there is my camera app there, but if your camera app isn't there, you can just take your finger from the bottom of your iPad, even below the tray, and swipe up. And when you swipe up, it pulls up this menu where you can mess with your Wi-Fi, do all those different things. But also at the very bottom, there is the camera app. So you, I can click on that and open up my camera app. Now, now that it's open, I have a few different options of types of photos that I can take. I'm just going to use photo right now, but check out some of those different offer, options and play with them and see what you and your students can do with that. So I'm going to take a picture of something really exciting. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to snap a quick picture of this remote. Okay. Now once I have my picture, there is a little thumbnail preview of it that shows up right below the white button that I just clicked on to take the picture. So I'm going to click on that thumbnail preview and it brings up my image. Now for just a second you're not going to see the top bar menu but there is a word that says edit at the top right of the screen. Now when I click on edit, it brings me to my edit mode of a photo. Now some of these things are the same. They've, these edit features have been there. We have our magic wand looking thing. I'm not even sure what the official name for it is, but it essentially just enhances your photo. It kind of automatically does it. If I click on it, you can see it kind of just made it a little bit warmer. The color's a little bit richer, but I'm going to go ahead and click it again to get rid of it. There is a crop rotate section where if I click on that, I can use this wheel at the bottom. I just put my finger on the wheel and I can slide it and it'll rotate for me if that was necessary. I also can crop if I wanted to focus in on a certain spot. I am or I can go over to my the three, and it looks like a Venn diagram. There are different filters that are available that I can click on and try those out. There's also the icon that looks a little bit like a timer, and that's where you can manually adjust the light and the color, or if you wanted to go black and white. But the last thing that is new that I wanted to focus on was we have our circle with the three dots. If I click on that, the one option that shows up is markup. Now in the past, if your students have taken a picture, we've typically said snap a picture and then download this different app that they can get into where they can do different things with the picture. Well, now that it can all be done from the camera app, so you don't have to worry, oh, did I download this app? Is it updated? It's just already built into the camera app. We have a marker, we have a highlighter, a pencil, an eraser, and a lasso. The marker or pen is I can choose different colors just by clicking on them and then if I wanted my students to identify right angles on the screen they could then use they could go and draw where they see right angles on the screen if I wanted them to highlight examples of rectangles then they could highlight and if you notice on the highlighter it's thicker but it's also see-through so if you had your students for instance take picture of a worksheet or something uh, maybe not a worksheet but a paragraph of text you could actually have them highlight elements of text that you were looking for so I can go through and highlight a few examples that I see of rectangles I can use my pencil and I'm just choosing different colors to show this. I can use my pencil to uh, mark up different things and you can see there's a little texture to this one to make it really look kind of like a colored pencil. 
to erase things, I just click on my eraser and then just click on top of one of these elements that I've drawn and it will disappear. The lasso tool, I can take it, anything that I have drawn on the picture, I can take it and circle it and now it becomes movable. So now I could move it somewhere else on my screen and then I can just click anywhere on the screen to deactify the lasso tool and then that element that I've moved will stay there. Now these things are all great. There also are some more tools. If you see there's a plus button in the bottom right corner, if I click on plus, I can add text. Now this might be, I don't know if you caught that because it just dropped right in the middle black text on a black image, but I now have two circles that are the handles on the outside of my text box and I'm going to click and drag those handles to make it a little bit bigger. Now, right now it just says text. A keyboard didn't show up, nothing showed up. The only thing that's different about the screen now is next to the plus button, there's now two capital A's that are different sizes. I'm going to click on that and I now have some options. I, not many options. I can change my font to three different types of font. I can also drag the ball to make my text larger, smaller. I can also change the orientation, the alignment of my text if I wanted to. As long as this text box is selected, and I know it's selected because this, there's a square around it and the two blue dots show up on my text box, I can also change the color of my text. Okay, so I can click on it to make sure it's selected and I can change it to a different color. So I can move it around wherever. I also, if I use two fingers and twist, I can also change the direction of this text. So if I wanted it to fit a little bit better, I can put text wherever I'd like. Along with text, if I double click on that box, that is when the keyboard comes up and I can type geometry exclamation point because it's exciting. Now, I all of a sudden, now, I want to get rid of my keyboard, so in the bottom right corner, there's the keyboard with the down arrow. I can click that. Then I'm going to use that blue dot to drag this out and make that fit better. Okay, so now that I have my text, I'm going to go ahead. I can add a signature. You can see I was working on forging Santa's signature earlier, but I can add or remove a signature. So if I want to add a signature, we're going to hold on to that Santa, Santa one. That one might come in handy later, but I'm going to click the plus button. And then I'm going to sign my name, okay? So, Shannon. All right, so now let's say that's actually my formal signature. I say done. And now if I want to add a signature, I can click on Shannon. And again, these are terrible examples because it's showing up right in the middle of black, but my, sig my signature drops. So um, that's a kind of, it can be a really handy feature depending on how you want to use this. The magnifier is cool. The magnifier is this circle that it just always drops right in the middle here. But if I wanted to magnify something, let's say I want my students to make sure they can see the menu button on this, uh, on this remote, I can zoom in right there. The blue dot makes my magnifier bigger or smaller. The green one zooms in closer or out farther. So I have a few options with my magnifier, but now that will stay part of my image. So it's kind of a cool feature to get things to stand out. And then I also can, at the bottom, I can add shapes. So if I wanted to add a square, because green was the last color that I selected, it's a, it comes up green, but that's easily changed. So I could move this and I can reshape my box. Say the mute button's important to me. I can change colors. And if I click on the square circle option button there next to the plus sign, it'll also let me change the thickness or even fill in the shape, depending on what I want to do with it. So fairly limited, but at the same time, some really nice features. So once I have used markup and done everything that I want to do, then I'm going to go ahead and say done. And then it takes me back to my edit screen. So I have to say done again. I'm all done editing. And now I'm back to this screen 
where I then can do something with this. It's already in my camera roll, so I don't have to save it to my camera roll. It's there. But this, at the top of the screen, the square with the up arrow, if I click on that, it's kind of our universal share box. And that's where you would be able to, um, this whole row here is other apps that have been authorized to use the camera that you can share with. So depending on, um, if you were Google Classroom users, notice that I can share it through Classroom. I could do some really great easy things. Um, other things that I can do using my iPad to share it are on the bottom. So alternate apps, other things I can do on my iPad. But from there, whatever your assignment is, whatever makes the most sense for your students, you would just need to figure out how you want them to share the image, and then it's good to go. So again, that is all built into the camera app now.